Welcome back, guys, and this is Johnny Keck over at Amp Futures, and we're going to take you through the first segment of the chart trading portion of our video tutorial series of multicharts.net trading platform, AMP exclusive, free platform with AMP Futures only. And let's take you through the first step. The initial thing that we, I want to show you first is, is how to actually pull up a chart. Uh, so that's going to be uh, very straightforward. Let me go ahead and close the existing chart that you see on the screen here. And let's just go ahead and minimize a few of these windows. All right, so now kind of make things a little clean here. And the first thing we're going to want to do to open up a new chart is we want to go to File on the top menu bar and then New, and then you'll see the option Chart Window. When you open up File, New Chart Window, what's going to happen next is you will see a window display that's going to say Format Instrument. And this is going to be where you'll select what market you want to create a chart for, what type of chart you want to open, as well as the interval that you'd like to use. The main thing here you want to make sure is the data source that you're using is selected. So at the top, you make, make sure that, uh, for example, I'm using a CQG demo. So I'm going to make sure I select CQG as the data source. And now the next step is identifying the contract that we want to create a chart for. So I'm just going to stick with the mini S&P since that's what we've been using throughout the presentation. And you'll see here mini S&P 500 June contract EPM16. Now I'm going to click on the settings tab and I'm just going to go ahead and make sure it's a one minute chart. I personally like the time zone on the bottom of the chart to reflect local time zone based on where I live. Uh, since I'm in California, that's going to be West Coast time. And I will just keep the chart a bit short in terms of the historical data just so I don't have a loading screen for a while during the video. And now I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So we won't get too in deep in terms of the chart types. That will be for a different segment. For now, just showing you how to open up a chart. Now that I've identified everything that I need, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now you can see the chart has been activated. So the first thing you're going to notice on the top right corner of the chart, there's a little arrow pointing to the left. If you hover your mouse cursor over that arrow, it's going to say chart trading. So you're going to want to left click on that to activate it. And when you left click on that chart trading arrow, you're going to see the panel activate as you can see. Now the next step is I would recommend enabling what we call full mode. Full mode is going to give you the ability to use OCO entry and exit strategies, which is very popular within multicharts.net. So how you do that is you right click with your mouse in the off gray area here, or beige area, and you want to right click with your mouse. If you right click on the chart, you're going to get the actual chart menu option. So you want to right click on the right side panel here, and you want to go ahead and switch to full mode. All right, so when you switch to full mode, you can see now that it activates a panel that gives you a, a lot more options. So this is going to give you the ability to use entry and exit strategies. Um, as I mentioned in the previous video, we won't cover how to use the entry and exit strategies, but more just want to show you how to activate them on the chart trader panel, which is important if you want to take advantage of OCO functionality. So now the next step is let's give you a, a breakdown of what you see here. So you have the chart trader panel, which is this panel that you see here. At the top, you have your broker profile connection, which allows you to connect to different broker and data feeds in terms of the data feeds that we support here at AMP. We have CQG, which is what we're currently using, LMAX for our international Forex traders, Paper Trader, which is the local simulation mode, which allows you to switch back and forth between demo and live when you have a live account, Rhythmic data feed, as well as Trading Technologies TTNet. So you do have the flexibility of choosing different data providers and connecting to the platform, and you can use and manipulate that off the actual chart trader. Um, you can do it simply by managing the broker profile. Now, of course, you want to make sure that you have a green circle connection that gives you an indication that you're actually successfully connected. And then here is your account display. At the moment, I'm using a demo account, so it's showing a demo ID. Of course, it would show your live account number if you were trading live. Then here, you notice that these buttons look very similar to the dome panel. You have the same quick buttons that I mentioned, buy market, sell market. Now, this is different. This is not available on the actual dome, so this is a bit different. These are limit orders. So what you're doing here is you're buying at the limit or buying at the offer at 2037, which is a limit order. You're selling at the best bid, which is a limit order at 2036.75. You're either joining the bid, so you're placing a buy limit at the bid, or you're placing a sell limit at the offer. So these are quick buttons for placing limit orders for either hitting the offer, hitting the bid, or joining the bid, or selling to the offer. All right, so now you can see these quick buttons here. The same as the dome as well. You have cancel bids, cancel ask. Now, that, these two buttons are, are only on the chart trader panel. This is only going to cancel working buys and cancel working sells. Cancel all will cancel all working orders. And then you have close in reverse, which will do the same thing as, as I mentioned in the dome. Your close is going to be also known as flatten. It will close out your position at the current market price while simultaneously canceling all working orders or reverse 
will reverse your position based on what your total net position is. This is your quantity, so if you want to select how many contracts you'd like to buy or sell, you can either use the up and down arrows, or you can use a little calculator, whichever is easier. I always find it best just for myself, typing in the actual quantity in the actual field there. These are the different order types, so you'll just be, be sure to select which order types you'd like to use. And then again, these are the exit strategies and entry strategies. Okay, so that's the panel. Now let's take you into the meat and potatoes in terms of how to place trades off the actual chart trader. There's two ways of doing it. Now I'm going to demonstrate both methods. The first method is what we call point and click method, and it's exactly the way it sounds. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your mouse cursor and point it on any area or price level on the actual chart itself. So let's say, for example, at 2038, I'd like to place a sell limit at 2038. So I'm going to left click, or better yet, right click with my mouse cursor at 2038. Now, one thing I want to show you, if you're having a hard time identifying the price uh, simply because there's no crosshair, you can activate a crosshair on the top menu bar here on multi-charts. You'll see there's an option right there where it says show hide cross. If you left click on that, you can see that it'll activate a crosshair. And now it makes it a little easier to identify the price of where your mouse cursor is hovered. Of course, uh, it's going to round it off to the nearest tick value for the market that you're actually trading. So in this case, you can see there's no such thing as 2037.48 on the mini S&P. So it'll simply round it off to 2037 and a half. So that's the best way to identify what price level the order is going to be submitted at if you decide to use the active crosshair. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and keep that, that crosshair active. And let's say I want to place a sell limit at 2038 even. So you can see that's 2038.202. It's going to round off to the even. I'll right click with my mouse, and then now you see the option place order. So what this is going to do now is multi charge is only going to give you the available order types that you can place at that price level. So in this case, you have a sell limit at 2038. So I'm going to simply left click the order, the, the desired order type that I'd like to submit. So in this case, a sell limit at 2038. And now, as you can see, the order is visibly working on the actual chart. So that's the point and click method. Let me go ahead and cancel the order out by hitting the X. And just for now, I'm going to temporarily disable the crosshair, mainly because I just want uh, full clarity in terms of what I'm doing on the actual chart. Sometimes the crosshair kind of gets in the, way, in the way. You can see the last trade price is identified by the 2037 dark marker. Now, if I place a order below the current market price, let's say for instance 2035, notice the available order types are either a buy limit at 2035 or a sell stop, which are pretty much the only order types that can be placed at that price level based on where the market is trading at this very moment. So this time I'm going to place a sell stop, and now you can see the order is working. Okay, So I'm going to cancel the order by hitting the X. And now the order is canceled, okay? So that's the point and click method. The recap, you're just going to point your mouse cursor at the actual price level on the chart. You're going to right click with your mouse, and you're going to place order and select the specific order type that you'd like to use, and the order will be immediately applied. All right, now the second method is what we call drag and drop method. And this is my preference in terms of using the chart trader. Um, it's always going to come down to personal preference and which method you feel is going to be best for yourself. I like this particular method because it reduces an extra click. Now, if you notice here in the place order on the right side panel, you'll see these little icons, and you'll see there's abbreviations for each one of those icons. A little key, a little tip, if you take your mouse cursor, left click on the order type, and if you hover it, it'll give you a short description of what that order type is and what it's going to do. So in this case, you can see a stop order. That's a limit order. What you're looking for is you always want to make sure that specific icon is highlighted to give you an indication that you have selected that specific order type. So let's say I want to place a sell stop at 2033 even. I'm going to left click the stop order. As you can see, it's highlighted. Now I'm going to hold down the left click over the stop order, drag it onto the actual chart while holding down my left click, and I'm just going to drop it at 2033. Now that's one thing that's the downside about using the drag and drop method is because you don't have the luxury of using a crosshair, sometimes you might accidentally drop the price one tick worse, or not, I don't want to say worse, but one tick away from your intended price. So therefore, you have to kind of modify the order up quickly just to get it on the right price. But if you're very good with you know, holding, being very steady with your mouse cursor, you shouldn't have that problem. Evidently, um, in this very example that I just done, uh, I was not able to get it right on the actual price. Let me go ahead and cancel the order out, and let's show you a different example. So I'm going to this time place a buy limit at 2032 even. So in this case, I'm going to left click on the actual limit order this time. I'm going to left click, hold down the left click on the limit order, drag it down, 
while holding down the left click, and now I'm going to simply drop it at 2032. And now you can see that the order has been placed. So that time I was able to get it precisely on the price that, uh, that I intended to place the order at. And now you can see the order is actually working. So as you can see, there's a little more efficiency with using the drag and drop method because it does reduce an additional click. And uh, that's the only reason why I prefer that method. I'm all about efficiency. Uh, but uh, sometimes you will run into that problem, as I, as I shown you earlier, that you might accidentally miss by a tick off here and there. So you might have to just quickly drag and drop to modify the order. Uh, now going back to the same topic of modifications, let's go ahead and show you how to actually modify orders once the orders are actually working on the actual chart trader. So in this instance, we see the order working to buy one contract at 2032 on a limit order. To, to modify the order, it's very similar to the dome. You're going to take your mouse cursor, and what you're looking for, if you notice, at this very moment, my mouse cursor is not hovered over the order, so therefore it's a regular cursor. Watch what happens when I hover my mouse cursor over the order. It will turn into a little hand icon, and that's a good indication letting you know that you're now ready to amend the order. So the next step is you want to hold down your left click, and you can almost see that hand icon. It almost looks like it's pulling on the order. So this is me holding down on the left click, and now I'm going to simply move the order to the price that I want to change it to. So let's say I want to move it to 2034 even. I'm holding down the left click. I'm going to release the left click. And now you can see the order has been modified. So that's a drag and drop modification, single click, left click, drag, and drop. All right, to cancel the order, you hit the X. And now you see the order is canceled. So this summarizes uh, this particular segment. We have shown you uh, some of the capabilities that you can do on the chart trader panel, how to place trades off the charts using two different methods, whether it's the point and click method or the drag and drop method or single click drag and drop modification, which allows you to easily uh, change and modify the orders. In the next segment, we're going to show you what a position looks like, uh, where to verify how your average price, also known as your fill price, how to identify that. And uh, we'll get into a few scenarios and placing a couple limits and stop orders while in a position. And we'll show you how the profit and loss display will display as well when you're actually using the chart trader panel. We'll see you in the next segment. Thank you very much. <music>